way they behave like bullies, like dictators. A quasi-dictatorship here in the ACT. The current hospital site is the best location. There's very few things that wake people up and just, you know, get them anxious and angry, but this has done it. In Canberra, the Territory Government is taking over one of its main public hospitals, which up until now had been owned and run under contract by a Catholic institute, the Little Company of Mary. A free and fair country, symbolised by this magnificent building here, is under threat here in the ACT. There are some who will want to take this as an attack on the Catholic Church. I want to assure members that this is no such thing. The deal was struck in 1971 by the Commonwealth before the ACT was given self-government rights. It's cost about $24 million. The Little Company of Mary constructed, then operated, Calvary Public Hospital on the north side of Canberra. The larger Canberra Hospital is on the south side. They're the backbone of the health system in the capital and both are run as public hospitals. But while the staff who run Canberra Hospital work for the public health agency, the roughly 1,800 staff at Calvary are for now employees of Calvary Healthcare. The safe and orderly transition of Calvary Public Hospital Bruce employees, assets and services to the Territory and compensation on just terms. Calvary resisted what it called a hostile takeover in the ACT Supreme Court, but its application was dismissed. The Territory will now go ahead with a formal acquisition date on July 3, less than three weeks away. A new hospital will be built on the site at a cost of more than $1 billion. If we're going to invest that into a new hospital, we want that hospital to be owned by the ACT government, by the people of Canberra, not by a private entity. In December, fires at Calvary took all seven of its operating theatres offline in a territory with just 20 public theatres. The government says the fires exposed problems with managing public hospital capacity across two systems. We've got one hospital that tends to carry the load whenever there's a surge in demand or a problem in another part of the system. And we need to be able to balance that across two hospitals. And the only way we can really achieve that is if we have a single operator. We've been working in the ACT for 44 years, uh, sharing uh, resources and sharing load right across that system. So I'm not quite sure uh, why that's all of a sudden became an issue. It's the damning report the minister knew was coming that gives an insight into one of the most toxic health systems in the country. Critics of the plan point to allegations of cultural problems at the main Canberra hospital and the management into which Calvary will now be absorbed. One of the most disappointing elements of this debate has been the tendency for critics of the decision to then turn around and denigrate Canberra Health Services. Yes, there have been some cultural challenges at Canberra Hospital, but there have also been some cultural challenges at Calvary Public Hospital. I think our culture is pretty good, but it's not up to me to talk about uh, other services and the cultures that may be, uh, may be in those, those particular services. <laughs> People are asking Anthony Albanese to intervene, and so far he's not. The takeover has been vigorously opposed by the Canberra Liberals, but it's also caught the attention of federal Conservatives who want a Senate inquiry to investigate the takeover. Let's have some questions about the um, OCT government's proposed acquisition of Calvary Hospital. It's a bit unusual for the Nationals to take up a cause that's related to a, a, a hospital right here in the capital city, isn't it? Well, no, we spend about half our year down here. Um, and, uh, you know, I, when I go, you know, I don't pretend to be a great Catholic, but I still go to Mass. And when I go there, you meet other people say, well, we want someone to stand up for this. This is a hospital that was brought about by the Little Sisters of Mary. It's premised on a religious view, but it's hardly a sinister organisation. It's hardly a cabal of witches in, in the dark arts. You should leave people and their religious beliefs alone. They're not hurting anybody. Opposition leader Peter Dutton said it was an extraordinary attack on freedom of religion and called for the Prime Minister to intervene. But Mr Albanese hasn't. He should do that. And if, if that doesn't work, then look at other alternatives. The ACT Health Minister says there will be additional services at the hospital after the takeover. Women who come in for a caesarean uh, will be able to get a tubal ligation at the same time. Uh, women who've just been, have just been given birth will be able to access information about contraception. But any argument that we're suddenly going to start uh, performing elective abortions at this hospital um, is completely baseless. An ACT Government Committee on Health found in an April report 
that Calvary had refused to perform a procedure known as a DNC on a woman who had an incomplete miscarriage because it's a process also used in abortions. We look at the person in front of us and if someone is in an emergency situation, we will deal with that. I just don't believe uh, the way they portrayed us in that was a fair representation of who we are and how we operate. The report said it was problematic that one of the ACT's major hospitals is, due to an overriding religious ethos, restricted in the services that can be delivered to the Canberra community. It is also reasonable to assume that a significant number of Canberrans would be unaware of the religious model of care, which underpins Calvary Hospital's operation and impacts on their available services. There will be people in Canberra who are very well aware that Calvary Public Hospital is run by a faith-based organisation and for them that will colour their view about their safety or their potential experience, um, either positively or negatively when attending Calvary Public. There are many other people in Canberra who will just see it as a public hospital, who will just treat it as a public hospital, who wouldn't actually think about the fact that it's provided by a Catholic organisation. It's called Calvary Hospital. It's not called the wonderful world of Disney. The Little Sisters of Mary, where, who do you think they are? A bowling group. As far as uh, our ethos and all of that sort of stuff, that is definitely what drives our services, but that's got nothing to do with uh, uh, the fact that we're Catholic. It has everything to do with, with the fact that we put people at the centre of, of the way we deliver care. The ACT government plans to introduce voluntary assisted dying laws later this year. Clare Holland House, here on the shore of Lake Burley Griffin, is Canberra's only dedicated palliative care hospice, a place that cares for people as they die. The government already owns this facility, but it too is run by Calvary, and its future is not yet clear. The government hasn't ruled out taking it over too. We are still in a conversation with them about running palliative care services for the whole of the ACT. If this was about removing a faith-based provider from that critical element of service that will be closely related to voluntary assisted dying, we wouldn't be in that conversation. Uh, we believe that if Calvary remains the provider of Clare Holland House Hospice and the palliative care services, uh, that we will be able to work through those issues with them as well. We operate in these other states uh, where it is available and we, we manage those issues. And that's what we, that's what we do. Uh, people have choice. And we recognise people have choice. And that's, that's their decision, not ours. Now come the logistics of switching over the hospital's management and questions over just how much the culture of the hospital will really change once it no longer carries the Calvary brand. I do hope the culture can remain, uh, but at the end of the day, culture is something uh, that comes from the top of an organisation as well. I know that the culture that the staff there are talking about is the culture that they create among themselves. Uh, and that will absolutely remain.